The environment window is the heart of Notator Logic's MIDI management. This is where all the neat tricks can be done to make your Notator Logic almost transparent to use. If you want to play piano, it should be as simple as walking over to the piano and playing. If you want to play a bass part, it should be as simple as if you're picking up the bass guitar and playing. Well, easy if you can play bass, I suppose. The environment is a virtual representation of your MIDI setup on screen. You can connect MIDI instruments together, put them through processors and manipulate the data on screen and hear the results instantly. We can get to the environment in a number of ways. Firstly, by double clicking on a track or method two, we've actually set up a window for you under key three on the video song demo you loaded. We'll press that now to call up our window set, the environment window. Wow. The environment is currently showing all of its contents, and I think it's safe to say we can recognize a few icons and names from when we set them up earlier in the track list. There's the piano, bass, and drums. As we click on each one, you can see the parameters that we set up in that track parameter box. When we set these instruments up in the arrange page, what we were also doing was amending their parameters in the environment. The things we can see in the environment window here are referred to as objects. Now, there's a good reason for this. A thing in the environment window isn't necessarily a MIDI instrument. It could be all sorts of things, as we're about to find out. So, let's take a look at the objects that are currently in the environment. Here we've got 16 icons that, as we click on them, we can see are assigned to MIDI channels 1 through 16. Some already have icons, names, and parameters set. We did this by the arrange window earlier on. Others are simply set to their default settings of MIDI channel and port assignment. Just up here, we have our MIDI click, which we set up just before we started the first recording. Here's one slightly odd icon, a telephone. This represents the modem port on the Macintosh. For some reason, this icon also was chosen to represent the output ports of the Atari as well. You'll notice that the MIDI click icon is connected to the modem port, our access to the outside world, with a cable. If you're wondering why this is connected via cable, if our MIDI instruments here aren't, this is because instruments, for convenience sake, can be directly assigned to a port in the track parameters box here. If you remember, this box appears both in the range window and in the environment window. That means we can easily reassign the MIDI output of an instrument from the arrange window should we need to make any emergency changes without entering the environment window and recabling. Cool, eh? Over here we have 16 fader icons, cables to the modem port. Remember, only instruments can be directly assigned to a port. As we click on each one, its information appears in a parameter box also. You can see that each fader is set to its own MIDI channel and is set to send out controller 7 or MIDI volume as it's often called. It's here that we can create automated fading of MIDI instruments and turn our computer here into a flying faders mixing desk for a fraction of the price. If I just play the Sven song and move the faders you can hear instruments getting quieter and louder again. Here we go. There's the piano going down and getting louder again. Useful, but not terribly exciting in itself. You could just as easily change the volume on your synth for each instrument or use the program volume and pan stuff we've set up. I'm sure you're itching to see how it's done, but first we have to create a suitable window set as we need to see the environment and arrange windows together. I'll call up window set 8. It's blank at the moment. And open the arrange window. So, and then underneath here, I'll open the environment window again. So size that up there, and then go back to the menu and choose open environment. As my environment window is going to end up a little bit smaller than before, I can't see everything in it, so I'll scroll down using this scroll bar at the side here until I see my faders. 
that's great, just one of those. Super. Right. Firstly, we need to assign a fader to a track. So I click and hold on the track list and scroll through until I find the fader for MIDI channel 1. There it is. OK, let's go into record and I'll make some fader moves as the song plays. As I do this, you should hear the electric piano volume going up and down. So press record. And now the song's playing. Let's adjust the volume of that electric piano. Down. And you can see it graphically represented on the screen there for you. That's great. Just for now, just for uh, practice purposes. And press stop. Let's play that back straight away. So double click on stop and press play. Blimey! The fader's moving all by itself. This is good stuff. If you want to fade a large group of instruments on different MIDI channels, you can shift click faders or rubber band them with the mouse and they become grouped together. Just grab one and the others will move and be recorded like so. Great. You can have any number of MIDI instruments, faders and all sorts of other objects in your environment by choosing them from this new menu here. As you can see, there are loads of different things in this menu. Instruments, faders, chord memorizers, delay lines, it goes on. I'm sure you understand that we could spend hours in here looking at the different objects and how you cable them up. Well, we will, but not now. This video is meant as an introduction to Notator Logic. The heavy stuff, and believe me, it's worth the wait, will come in video two. By all means, create some objects and cable them up to see what they do. If you create an environment for your system along with any window sets, etc., these can be saved as a thing called Auto Load Song, which is the song that automatically loads when you load the program. This means that each time you load the program, it will be instantly configured to your own personal tastes and requirements. Don't forget, though, to always quit from the program using the quit command under the file menu, as this ensures any additions you have made to the key commands window or preferences will be saved.